Welcome to Module 5, Lesson 34, where we will subtract mixed numbers, something that we've been doing for several lessons now. And by now, you've practiced several strategies. And I just want to remind students that subtraction is the difference between two numbers, right? If someone was nine years old and another student was six years old and you wanted to know the difference between those two ages, you would subtract and get three, right? Because on a number line, a nine is located here, a six is located here, and the difference between them, the space between, right here, is three. It would take three hops to get from six to nine, it would take three hops to get from nine to six. So just because we're using mixed numbers doesn't mean it should be to find the difference. You just need to find what is the space between these two numbers. Now, one way to do that is the number line. So on B right here, I've already kind of set up a number line. I want to know the difference, the space between 6 and 3 eighths would be located somewhere over here, right? And 6 eighths, which isn't even 8 eighths yet. It's not a whole, so it's somewhere over here. So this space between is their difference. So one way to do that is to count your eighths to get all the way from one to another. So I need to know where 6 and 3 eighths is at. So I'm going to go ahead and label fourths and then turn it into eighths over here. And 6 eighths at the end, I'm going to be doing the same way. I want to know where the eighths are. So I could go ahead and plot my points here. Let me get something brighter so you can see it. And I'm going to look for 6 and 3 eighths, which would be right here, 6 and 3 hops, and 6 eighths, which would be the 6th hop, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right here. Now, to get from one end to the other, it'd be best if I could count by whole numbers. So something that many students do is hop first to the closest whole number and say how far that was away. The space between those two was 3 eighths away. Now the space from here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 whole spaces. And then right here is 2 more eighths. Now all these hops put together is the total space between these two numbers. So. I have 5, and then I also have 2 eighths and 3 eighths for 5 eighths. So B has been solved. The difference between 6 and 3 eighths and 6 eighths is 5 and 5 eighths. Now for A, they used a different strategy, and I think I've mentioned this before to students at this point. I don't care at this point what strategy you use as long as you show me your work. By now you've looked at lots of strategies. Now. The problem with subtracting 5 and 1 fourth is you can't subtract 3 fourths from 1 fourth. So all this person did in this strategy was to change 5 and 1 fourth to 4 and 5 fourths. Now how did they do that? What did they do? See, 5 could be broken up into a 4 and 4 fourths. Right? Isn't 4 fourths still just a 1? So 4 and a 1 make 5. But we also had a 1 fourth with this guy. So instead of 4 and 4 fourths, you could decompose it to 4 and now 5 fourths. Because 4 fourths and 1 fourth make 5 fourths. And now we can subtract. You would end up having really hideous equal sign. Sorry about that you would end up having, sorry my hand keeps bumping into the buttons, you would end up having your 4 and then your 5 your five fourths would subtract your 3 fourths leaving you with 2 fourths or you could also call it 1 half. Alright? In the next section they use subtract the ones first. You, the first one's been done for you. You could use this model and follow along with me on B. You do not have to subtract the ones first if you don't want to, but this strategy is pretty cool. 
what they mean is subtract the ones, the whole numbers first. So 4 minus 1 equals 3. So first step here is 4 minus 2 equals 2. So let's go ahead and continue our problem. It equals 2. And what's still left over? Well, there's still the 3 sixths minus the 5 sixths, which presents a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and do the strategy we just did last time. And I'm going to call this a 1. And if it was a 6 6 to make 2, and I add that to my 3 6 that he has right here, I would have a total of 9 6. Now that I could subtract with, right? I would still have my 1, but what would be left over is this 9 6 minus this 5 6, which would leave me with 4 6. Okay, so subtracting with um, the whole numbers and making your fraction improper on purpose is a pretty good strategy. Now how about the arrow method? That's one that my students like a lot. It's very much like the number line. You want to count up. There is a way to count down as well, but most of my students like to start with the smallest number and then count up to the highest number. So I'll start with 4 and 9 twelfths. And I'll go up how many twelfths? Three twelfths, because nine twelfths and three twelfths would make twelve twelfths, which would get me to five. Now, if I want to get to seven, I'd have to add two whole mores, two more holes. <laughs> so now I'm at seven. And then I want to get to seven and three twelfths, so I'll add three more twelfths, and now I'm at seven and three twelfths. Now, where's my answer? My answer is the difference between these two numbers. The, the hops I made, the space between these two numbers on a number line. And if I put these two together, I would have two holes, and I would have three twelfths and three twelfths for six twelfths, which also could be called half. The, the uh, arrow method is really great for fractions, especially like C and D, because we're talking about sixteenths and hundredths, we definitely do not want to draw these on number lines, right? So let's try it one more time. I'm going to have nine and seven sixteenths. I want to get all the way to seven and two sixteenths. So my first step is going to want to be to get to sixteen sixteenths. So that would be to add 9 more sixteenths, which would get me to 10 now. And then I want to get to 17, not 7. So I'm going to go up 7 more. Okay. 7 more. And that gets me to 17. And now I'm going to have to go up 2 sixteenths more to get me to 17 and 2 sixteenths. And my answer, of course, is the space between a total of 7 and 11 sixteenths. All right. I've done a several for you, and we've practiced this a lot. If you still need more guidance on subtracting fractions, then please see me, and I'll be glad to help. Thanks.